Hello, thank you so much for joining me. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make these cute little 3D diorama scene sorts of things in ArcGIS Pro. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And in a second video, I think I'm gonna do one about how to make one underwater using bathymetric data. It's a pretty simple process. You just start with a digital elevation model. You clip it to your area of interest. You drop it into a 3D scene and give it some vertical exaggeration. You give it a transparent background and then you just goof around drawing fake 3D stuff in a layout. Let's go. Here I am in ArcGIS Pro. I'm going to add data and in the Living Atlas tab, I'm going to search for terrain. And I'll choose this and add it to the map. Terrain is an image service that always gives me one image to the extent of my view and it's global all the way down to very local it's a digital elevation model and it goes in really closely thanks to the heroic Rajinder Nagi who manages all these different sources and puts them into this single image service that scales with you here is Crater Lake Oregon actually one of the most beautiful places I've ever laid eyes on outstanding little gray so i'm going to click on the symbology panel instead of the statistics being pulled from the whole data set which is sea level all the way to the tip of everest and these intermediate areas are going to be pretty washed out i'm going to choose dynamic range which only takes into account the lowest and highest elevation areas in my view and stretches gray in between all of those elevations now i want to export this as just a single extraction an isolated static image from this image service. And here's a trick I'll show you. I'm gonna pop this out and I'm gonna make it roughly square. My goal is to have a square export, so that's why I'm doing this. Make my view square. That looks pretty square. Looks there. And I'll zoom in, you know, just the extent that I wanna export. That looks good. Now I'm going to right click this and go to data, export raster, and I'll choose a destination. And I'm going to save it as a TIFF. I'll add the extension TIF there because it's a geo TIFF and I love them. I could also choose TIFF down here. The clipping geometry I'm going to set to be the same as my current display extent, which is this. Let me just check the, yeah, that looks good. And why are these red? It's because there's a limit. You can't export more than 500 by 500 rows and columns of this data. So I'll just make it 4,000. I said 500, but I meant 5,000. 4,000. Okay, and I'll leave the rest of this as is and export this and see what we get. Okay, I'll put this back, nestle it, nestle it back in here, and there we go. I can turn off my original terrain image service. Thank you, Regender. I love it. Turn this off. Now we have a square extract. I'm actually all done with this, so I'll just remove that altogether. And now I need this to be in 3D. Currently, it's in a 2D map. If I go to the View tab, I can just switch this to a global scene, which is 3D. And with my little scroll wheel pressed, I can tilt and rotate as I see fit. Oh, that's pretty cool. What, uh, what perspective do I want? So it's pretty flat though. That's because our elevation, if I choose this ground elevation and I go to the appearance tab, there's no vertical exaggeration happening. I'm going to give it some. Let's see what 10 looks like. Holy smokes. 10 is going to be too much. Where did you go, Crater Lake? There. Um, two? Good grief. Mm, five. Oh, we're getting somewhere. That's still too much. What if I switch this to, geez, three? Okay, this looks good to me. I like it. Now I can still see shading of the elevation and terrain around my area of interest. That's because this is a global coverage and it's gonna sh throw shade all over. It doesn't care that I just have one layer here. So what I need to do is change the surface color from white to transparent. 
I'll open the color properties and I'll just make it 100% transparent. Now I have a uh, crater lake elevation floating in space. How do I get rid of this? I'm gonna double click my 3D map, double click to open the properties and in the illumination tab, I'm just gonna uncheck show stars and halo. And now I have nothingness, just a white nothingness background, fully transparent, nothing's there. It's not even white, but that's what it looks like in our view. At this point, we're ready to insert a layout and put our map into it. So I'm gonna insert a new layout. I'll do a custom page size and I'll choose points. And I want it to be 1920 by 1080 pixels. And in points, that turns out to be 1440 by 810 points, points. <laughs> Hit okay. Here's my screen size layout. I'm going to insert my map frame snapping to the corners and if I want to reposition it if I just click and drag oh no I moved my whole map frame Control Z to undo I'll have to activate this right click activate this map frame now I can navigate within it right so I'll get this set up just so I'll right click and drag down to zoom in and I'm just gonna kind of center this. I'm gonna be adding a little bit of decoration down here, so I need to give it a little bit of room. And if I click the scroll wheel and move it around, it gives me a lot of degrees of freedom. And that looks pretty good. You're gonna have a dynamic looking layout if your front corner and your back corner are sort of aligned with each other in imaginary space. Okay, I'll exit this. And by default, I've got a black outline around my map frame. I'm gonna get rid of that. I'll double click this and the little paintbrush option here. I'll set the border symbol to no, I'll close it. And now there's no black border around this. Tell you what, let's make this terrain look cool. Instead of black to white, let's use one of the Viridis color schemes called Magma, yes. It's so fun. It's a little flat though. I mean, even though it's bumpy, of course, we don't have uh, hill shade happening yet. So I'm gonna go into the imagery tab and I'll choose raster functions. And in the service group, there's something called hill shade and I'll choose my crater lake elevation model and I'll just leave it all default and say go. And now I have a luscious sculpted hillshade terrain on top of my, oh, but it is on top of, I can't see it. Oh no. I'm gonna go to the appearance and the layer blend, I'll choose soft light. And there, it's a little bit low contrast. So I'm gonna open this and instead of a stretch type of none, I'll choose standard deviation and force some contrast. I have forced too much contrast. By increasing the number of standard deviations, I can smooth it out to taste. So three, and let's try four. That looks nice. Since this is Crater Lake, I'm gonna add in a polygon of this lake. Here it is. Ah, lovely, a taupe Crater Lake. Let's play with this color. If I go to the layer stack and choose solid fill, instead of this solid fill, let's choose a gradient fill and the pattern will be linear. And instead of stepped, I'll choose continuous. So it's a nice smooth transition. And I'll make this black to white. I'll just hit apply and see what we've got. And maybe you're wondering why I'm choosing black to white instead of some kind of water-like color or something. That's because I'm gonna use a blend mode here in the appearance with this layer selected, the layer blend I'll set to overlay. Overlay based on black and white will change the tone of this underlying elevation color. Let's tone this down a little bit. Speaking of tones, I'll choose gray 60. That's nice. And this stroke, instead of gray, I'm gonna make it white. And it's hard to see what even happened. So if I Let's zoom in on our layout a bit, take a closer look at this lake. The lake polygon is sort of slipping up into the elevation. 
and that's just a very slight misalignment of the vector and the underlying raster elevation stuff. No big deal. I'll expand the offset effect and I'm going to give it a negative offset to snug it inside the polygon. Choose one, two, and I'll choose accurate so it doesn't double up on itself in complex areas. And I'll hit apply to see what we've got. That's a lot better. Actually, while we're at it, why don't I go into the structure, I'll duplicate this stroke. So now I have two outer strokes. I'll come back to the layers and I'm gonna increase this offset a lot, like negative 15 points way in. And for the dash effect, I'll choose some kind of just default dash and then I'll change it to something big and kind of random. So it's a number space number for on and off and you can have as complex an array as you like. So I'm gonna choose 33 on, 22 off, 12 on, 18 off, uh, 44 on, 20 off. So it looks kind of pseudo random like a s rippling edge of water, let's see. That looks awesome, I love it. Let's add another one. negative 30 points snugged way in and this time I'll do an array where it's less on and more off what I mean is like 12 on 33 off 15 on 25 off 7 on 30 off apply and there it is cute little uh, rippled edge effect fun Okay, from here on out, it's all just graphical design shenanigans. So if you're more comfortable drawing things and playing with fills and textures and stuff, maybe you wanna export it right now and work on it in Illustrator or Affinity, whatever you like. And you can do that by going to the Share tab and choosing Export Layout and make sure that you have a format that supports transparency, PNG, and you can set it to whatever resolution you want and make sure that transparent background is selected because when you do that, this transparent background will be transparent in your PNG and you can drop this into any kind of environment and go to town or deliver it to a graphic design colleague or friend. But I'm gonna do this stuff right here in Pro. Collapse all this and in the Insert tab, I'm gonna look at this graphics and text zone and I'm going to choose polygon. And I'm gonna start right at the face of this diorama, front corner, zoom in a bit. In a, in a layout, you can press the scroll wheel on your mouse and it's automatically pan. And if you right click, it's zoom. So I'll look at this front edge here and um, I'm gonna add my polygon. So I'll give it a straight vertical facing edge and I'll come all the way over here and I'm going to give this some dimensionality so it splays out. And so instead of coming straight down from this, I'm going to come in just a little bit and I'm going to make it shorter than the face so it has that sense of foreshortening. Then I'll come right over this edge and now it's just a matter of adding in really well as detailed as you want nodes here just one thing don't go too fast because if you if it senses you did a double click it'll close your polygon and then ugh, that's a hassle so nice and slow lots of ups and downs make sure that you would err on the side of drawing on top of the map instead of under the map here i go And now to give this a sense of being on a slight arced sphere, I'm going to right click this shape and choose edit vertices. And you can do that anytime and modify your vertices. I'm gonna change this segment into a Bezier curve. And holy smokes, what has happened? That's all right, I'll tone it down. So I'll come down here and I'm just gonna bring it about halfway for both to give it a slight kind of inner arc and then I'll do the same thing for this face
Likewise for this one, I'll choose edit vertices, change this segment to a curve, and bring these handles in to be a little less than halfway and arced slightly upward. And now I'm gonna search for an image that I can use as the texture of the sides of our extruded little diorama thing. Here I am at unsplash.com, a great resource for royalty-free images. I'll search for gravel. And this one looks good. And I'll choose the size of medium. Now there is a size limitation in Pro for using an image as a picture fill. So I'm just gonna play it safe and go with medium. I'm gonna name these polygons something that makes sense to me so I can keep track of them. I'll call this dirt left and dirt right. So for this one, I'm going to apply our image as a picture fill. Pro treats these a lot like map features, vector map features. If I double click this, it opens the property. The symbol tab is pretty much the symbology panel for polygon features. I can go into the layers and instead of a solid fill, I'll choose a picture fill. I'll choose the quality to be picture and I'm gonna navigate to the image we saved. And then I'll make it bigger, like 100 points, and see how it looks. It looks like dirt. I like it. Let's make this outline. Instead of solid black, I'll do white. And this is all just up to your preference. At this point, I'm just playing around to see what looks good. I'll make it pretty semi-transparent, like 60% transparent. Okay, that looks nice. Kind of like a little crisp edge catching a little bit of light. Now I want to add a sense of shade to this and bring in a little bit of the colors that we used here so it doesn't feel so out of place and abruptly gravel. So I'm gonna go to the structure tab and I'm going to add another symbol layer to this stack of symbols and I'll choose another fill layer. And this fill layer, I'm gonna make a gradient fill. And instead of buffered, I'll do linear. And instead of discrete, I'll do continuous. And the colors that I'll use here are gonna be kind of matching the map. So I'm gonna do this dark purplish color and I'll make this quite semi-transparent, like um, maybe, oh goodness, I don't know, 80% transparent. And then that'll transition to the top up to a yellow color. And I'll set this one to 90% transparent. I'm gonna to have to go less transparent down here. Well, let's see what we've got. Cool, okay, let's, let's make this less transparent. 50% um, transparent, so it's more opaque at the bottom. Okay, now it's just applying this linearly, so there's um, an unevenness. What I wanna do is rotate my gradient so it kind of matches this. Is that possible? Yeah, so right now the default is 90. If I decrease it 10, let's see which direction that gives us, the right direction. Okay, so 80, maybe 70 degrees. Let's see, closer, 60 degrees. Oh, I like it. 64 degrees. Oh man, we were close. 62. That's nah, nice. I like it. Okay, and I'm just eyeballing this, of course. I'm going to add another one of these. Actually, I'll just duplicate this one. And instead of a colorized gradient, I want to give it a little bit of shade. So like a, a semi-transparent black that fades. And I'll make this black. And this will be... 20% transparent. This other one I'll also make black, but it will be 100% transparent. I'm just stacking up layers of shade. We're just adding little bits of light over and over. And this time I'm going to decrease this more like 45 degrees. So it's darker on this side than this side. I'm apply. Let's go 35, 25. That looks good. Right? Kind of fun. Okay, now we just do the same thing for this side. Now for this shade layer, instead of linear, I want to add maybe a little weirder sense of light and shadow. So instead of a linear gradient, I'm gonna try a circular gradient. Actually, I'll reverse this. So it's kind of dark on the 
sides, but lighter on the in the middle. Let's see what we get. I like this a lot, actually. Looks cool. Okay, so there's our stack of symbols for our extruded dirt effect. We're making good progress. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is add a subtle little kind of drop shadow hack here. How do I do this? There is no drop shadow effect that you can do in a layout, but I can use a gradient stroke underneath this. So here we go, back to our friendly polygon draw, and I'll just draw it so it kind of comes out like this. That's a weird shape, right? Well, it's not so weird when I drag it underneath the map frame. So now the map frame is covering it up, and I'll give these curves as well. So I'll edit the vertices, change this segment to a curve, about halfway, about halfway, same here, oh that's weird, why would they be locked like that, mm -hmm. why? Okay, now I'm gonna make these, this stroke, a gradient. I can uncheck the fill, and for the stroke, I'll choose gradient stroke, and this will be very big, I don't know, 66. And let's see what we get. So the inside will be black, and I'll make it like 60% transparent, and then I'll transition all the way to 100% transparent at the edge of the stroke. Okay, at this point, I'm ready to export this as a transparent PNG. So I'll share my layout and I'll export it. PNG, transparency selected, whatever resolution I want, and we'll see what we get. And that's how you can hack together your own cute little extruded 3D diorama sort of thing in ArcGIS Pro. Have fun with this and stay tuned for the next video, which is gonna be about how to make one of these for an underwater scene using bathymetric data. Hey, also, if you're feeling extra crafty, you could try to make those cool little geological cross-section illustrations too. Nothing stopping you. Well, I definitely hope you give this a try and I'd love to see the sorts of things that you make with it. Can't wait. Thanks for watching.